Okay, and we're in part two of this video because I, I ran into the 15 minute max uh, time. So here we go. Our third error constant is Ka. Again, for parabolic inputs, this we put in for R of S 1 over S cubed because that's the Laplace transform for the parabolic input. Run the math, and lo and behold, we get S squared left over in the denominator. So I'm going to define my error constant as the limit as S goes to zero of this denominator, which is S squared G of S. So in essence, I can replace my formula now for steady state error with just 1 over Ka, as I've defined Ka up here. And again, this is only for the parabolic input. Once again, we're going to run through different system types and see what the value of Ka is. Type 0 system with a parabolic input. We form S squared G of S, so there's the S squared. It's a type 0 system, so there's no free S's in the denominator. And then we run S equal to 0. So all these guys go away, we're left with 1's. All these guys go away, we're left with 1's. We have a K hat left over, and then guess what? As S goes to 0, Ka goes to 0. Type 1 system, parabolic input. We still have S squared G of S, so the S squared stays in the numerator, but now we're a type 1 system for G, which means there's 1 S in the denominator. But even though uh, one, this will cancel, we still have an S left over in the numerator, so when I run S equal to 0, Ka is going to equal 0. Type 2 systems with a parabolic input, S squared G of S, I still have the S squared in the numerator. Now it's a type 2 system, there's two free S's, guess what, these guys cancel, and now Ka is a finite value, and it's just K hat. Because again, right, all these guys cancel, and I'm left with 1's, so all that remains is K hat when you run this limit. Type 3 systems and higher with a parabolic input, I'm going to get three or more S's, three S's in the denominator, which means this guy's going to cancel out and there will be at least one of these guys left over, so that when I run S equals a zero in the limit, I'm going to get zero in the denominator and Ka is going to be infinity. So here's our summary. Type 0 system, the steady state error is infinity. Type 1 system, the steady state error is infinity. And by the way, infin infinite steady state error is bad. Type 2 system, the steady state error is finite. It's a function of k hat. And type 3 systems and higher, the steady state error is 0. Now that I've done all that math, I basically have calculated the values that go into this nice table here. The way this table works is, every value in the table is the formula or the value of the steady state error. So here's a value where steady state error is infinity, steady state error is zero, steady state error is one over k hat. The way this table works is the rows are, here we go, is system type for the baseline system G. Again, system type is how many free S's does G have in the denominator? Type zero, one, two, and three. Over in this part of the table is the input function the unit step, the ramp, or the parabolic, and I've, I've put the functions here in time, but remember we also have the corollary Laplace functions for the step, the ramp, and the parabolic input. So the way you use this table is, and again this applies to a G of S with negative unity feedback in the, in the system, like we showed previously, but basically if G of S is a type 0 system, and you'll have finite error to the unit step and infinite error for ramp and par parabolic. If it's a type 1 system with unity feedback, you'll have zero steady state error for a step, finite for a ramp, infinite for parabolic, and so on. So what you can see is if, if your system gets a lot of unit steps and needs to track unit steps, you probably want to pick type 1 system or higher to get steady state error or, if you only have a type 0 system, then you want to make k hat really, really large so that the steady state error is small. Now, if your system needs to track ramp inputs, you can't do it with a type 0 system. You've got to be type 1 or higher, and maybe you want to be type 2 or higher so that you have zero steady state error. Again, if you can only get type 1, then you want to make k hat really, really large so that the steady state error is small. And in the rare case, your system has to track some parabolic input, and you got to be 
type 2 or higher, otherwise you're going to have infinite error. And uh, if you're type 2, you're going to want, again, k hat to be very, very large to make the steady state error small. What I see on this kind of main diagonal is for the finite steady state errors, they all lead me in the same direction. Make k hat large. And what if impacts k hat again? It's your baseline system gain k, maybe your controller gain k, and then which poles and zeros you choose. So you may want to use some really, really small poles as in close to the origin to help that out. And that's what lag control is going to do for us. And that completes this second part of the lecture. The rest of the information will have to be done in class.